Airbus and Boeing are the two giants when it comes to manufacturing commercial airplanes. The A380 is the latest and biggest plane from Airbus, while the 747 has been Boeing's flagship for quite some time. The biggest difference between the two is size, as the A380 is certainly much bigger than the 747. The Airbus A380 has a wingspan that is 15 and longer to that of the 747. It is also about 50% heavier than the 747, even when empty. The size of the A380 is such that many airport runways are not equipped to accommodate the huge planes and had to undergo major renovations to make them fit. The major contributor to the A380's considerable size is its second deck, which extends the full length of the entire plane. The 747 is also a double-decker, but its second deck is just very short. The 747's characteristic bulge at the front of the plane is the extent of its second deck. Because of the full length of the A380's deck, it can accommodate way more passengers than the 747 without extending its length by much. Even though the A380 is just over 2 meters longer than the 747, it can accommodate 33% more passengers in the usual three-class seating or up to 50% more in an all-economy seating. In order to get that much weight into the air, the A380 needs a lot more thrust than the 747. Each of the A380's four engines can put out at least 80,000 pounds of thrust, while the 747 engines only put out somewhere around 60,000 pounds of thrust. But all in all, the A380 still manages to be more efficient and less costly per passenger and would be perfect in high traffic routes like major cities and regional hubs. Other areas may not benefit from having an A380 or may even lose profit because of it. As the 747 has been in production for four decades, it is no secret that it has gone through many revisions and has many variants aside from the typical passenger and cargo models. Beluga In 2021, Airbus began phasing in its fleet of six new-generation Beluga XL versions, which will operate in parallel with the five in-service A300-600s before replacing them completely. With more than 20 years of reliable service, the Beluga ST airlifts complete sections of Airbus aircraft from different production sites around Europe. The five aircraft fleet of a 300 600 Belugas, operated by the Airbus Transport International, featuring one of the most voluminous cargo holds of any civil or military aircraft flying today, the Airbus Beluga ST offers a unique way to transport oversized air cargo. Also known as a 300-600 Stuper Transporter, the company's five existing Belugas play a key role in keeping its production and assembly network operating at full capacity, with the fleet's overall pace of operations, managed by the Airbus Transport International subsidiary, growing to support production ramp-ups. ATI ensures a high level of customer satisfaction with loading, unloading, and delivery designed to be fast, safe, flexible, and reliable as demonstrated by over two decades of successful operations throughout the world. The Beluga SD also is used for special worldwide operations for other Airbus payloads such as helicopters, satellite components, or complete satellites. Tupolev ANT-201 Gorostas The unimaginable vastness of the Soviet Empire and incredible remoteness of some of its parts was always considered as a double-edged sword. On one hand, the empire is unconquerable, the fact ingloriously proven by Napoleon and Hitler, among others. On the other hand, such colossal land is extremely hard to manage, both economically and politically. In an attempt to tie his gargantuan land together, Iosif Vissorianovich Stalin ordered a direct air link between European part and Far East part of the USSR to be operational by summer of 1955. Koba, as he was affectionately called, demanded two things. A non-stop line that would allow him to eat breakfast in Kaliningrad, sip a tea in Vladivostok and eat supper back in Kaliningrad, all in the same day, and a plane big enough to board every single member of the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union. For the uninitiated number of deputies in Supreme Soviet, 
1,500. Two major problems were glaringly obvious. Lack of infrastructure, airports, and capability of building a plane large enough to carry 1,500 passengers. Both problems were dealt with one stroke, building the largest flying boat. Instead of building new airports, Soviets opted for using existing seaports. Initially, two lines were conceived, red line connecting K-Line in Grad Vladivostok and blue line connecting Odessa and Komsomolsk. So, only one problem remained, how to build a plane capable of carrying 1,500 passengers and range of 10,000 kilometers, 6,200 mi, that could make a trip from K-Line in Grad to Vladivostok in 12 hours. This daunting task was assigned at Opet no Constructorsto Bureau, 156, better known as Tupolev Design Bureau. Hero of Socialist Labor Andrei Nikolaevich, Tupolev immediately assembled a core team of 42 engineers and went to work. By late 1953, first scale wind tunnel tests were made, and on 1st of May 1955, Tupolev ANT 201 took her maiden flight. The plane, aptly named Gorastas, the giant, was far bigger than anything ever conceived. It was 114 meters long, 30 meters high, with a wingspan of 138 meters. Propelling this enormous monster were six Kuznetsov NK, 12 engines with total output of 90.000 HP. Model 351 Straddle Launch the Scaled Composites Model 351 Straddle Launch is an aircraft built for straddle launch systems by Scaled Composites to carry Air Launch 2 orbit rockets. It was announced in December 2011 and rolled out in May 2017. The twin fuselage design is the aircraft with the longest wingspan ever flown at 385 feet, 117 m, surpassing the Hughes H. Four Hercules flying boats of 320 feet 11 inches, 97.82 m. The Strata launch is intended to carry a 550,000 pound, 250,000 kg payload and has a 1,300,000 pound, 590,000 kg maximum takeoff weight. The aircraft first flew on April 13, 2019, and shortly thereafter, the company announced it would halt development of its air-launched family of launch vehicles, following the death of Stratolaunch founder Paul Allen in October 2018. The company ceased operations the next month and placed all company assets, including the aircraft, for sale for 400 million US dollars by June 2019. Cerberus Capital Management acquired Stratolaunch systems, including the Stratolaunch aircraft in October 2019. Stratolaunch announced in December 2019 that it would now be focusing on offering high-speed flight test services. And 225. The aircraft can achieve non-stop intracontinental flight while accommodating 180T or 200T of payload. It can also perform intercontinental airlift of cargo weighing 150T. It can carry 16 standard UAC-10 aeronautical containers weighing 10T each. 50 autocars, turbines, generators, dump trucks, balaz, Komatsu, and Euclid. The N-225 is designed to execute both military and civil operations, even in the worst weather conditions. It is designed principally to carry Energy Rockets boosters and the Buran Space Shuttle from its service area to the launch site as part of the Buran Space Shuttle program. Oversized payload can be carried in its spacious cargo deck, as well as on an externally fixed mount. The large pressurized cargo compartment can carry a wide variety of payloads. The length and width of the compartment are 43M and 6.4M respectively. Its height is 4.4M. The floor area and volume are 280M2 and 1300M3 respectively. The compartment can carry 250T of cargo internally or 200T up to a height of 70M on the upper fuselage. The aircraft is fitted with a 32-wheel landing gear system. The nose landing gear features four wheels in the front fuselage section. The rear fuselage constitutes 16 dirigible wheels out of 28 tires fitted to the main landing gear. The aircraft can take full turn on a 60M wide runway. 
The N225 Emria can fly a maximum speed of 850 km per hour. The cruise speed is 800 km per hour. The range of the aircraft varies between 4,000 km and 15,400 km. On 11 June 2010, the N225 carried the world's longest piece of air cargo, 242.1M, 138-foot, test wind turbine blades from Tianjin, China to Skridstrup, Denmark. The N225 participated in the COVID-19 pandemic relief effort, conducting flights to deliver medical supplies from China to other parts of the world.